This demonstration will focus on correlation. This quantifies the extent to which there is a linear relationship between x and y when both variables are continuous. We'll use the file patient data. And someone has a theory that overall satisfaction and responsive to questions might somehow be related to each other. Correlation is a hypothesis test. And the alternative hypothesis is that there is indeed a linear relationship. The null hypothesis would be that there is no statistically significant linear relationship. Let's open our file and get started. We're going to focus on columns i and j, which is overall satisfaction and responsive to questions. Remember the fundamental principle y is a function of x. In this case, overall satisfaction would be the y variable, and responsive to questions would be an x. Correlation is often done in conjunction with scatter plots. You don't have to do a scatter plot first. I'll do one just to demonstrate and show you how these are linked. If you went to Graphical Tools, down at the bottom is Scatter Plots. We'll choose Entire Table next. The y variable is Overall Satisfaction. And x becomes responsive to questions. We punch OK. And you can see what appears to be a moderate positive relationship. As x increases, so does y. You can easily see a straight line through that data. In fact, it draws one for us. We'll hit F4 to go back to patient data. And now let's do correlation. To create a correlation coefficient, you go to Stat Tools and drop down to the middle of the menu where it says Correlation Matrix. We'll enter the entire table next. We'll put Overall Satisfaction in and also Responsive to Questions. When we hit OK, we get this analysis. We'll enlarge that a bit. At the top, you will see two boxes called Pearson Correlations. This comes to you courtesy of Carl Pearson, the same man who created the standard deviation. At the bottom is Spearman Correlations. Spearman Correlations are best used when you have outliers in your data. If you don't have outliers, use Pearson. Whenever someone says correlation, in general, they're referring to Pearson correlations. First, we're going to look at Pearson probabilities. The P in p-value stands for probability, the probability you would be wrong if you rejected the null. So this would be a table of p-values. In this case, the p-value is 0. P is low, the null must go. There is a statistically significant linear relationship. If you look up at the next box, which is Pearson correlations, you now get the correlation coefficient. Remember, this ranges from minus 1 to positive 1. The farther away you get from 0 on either side of the scale, the stronger the relationship. And whether it's positive or negative depends on the sign. In this case, we have a positive 0.82. How do you tell whether this is strong, moderate, or weak? According to the statisticians at Sigma Excel, a Pearson correlation coefficient is considered strong if it is between 0.9 and 1.0, either positive or negative. Moderate would be considered between 0.7 and less than 0.9, positive or negative. And weak would be considered less than 0.7. Of course, if the p-value is high, there is no statistically significant correlation. In this case, the numbers match our observations from the scatter plot. We have a moderate positive relationship. Remember, you need two things, both the numbers and your knowledge of the process to corroborate any cause-effect relationship. Correlation is not causation. But if it makes sense, that being responsive to patients' questions might drive overall satisfaction. It is possible that that x factor is indeed driving your y variable. One other thing I'd like to show you on correlation if we go back to patient data is this. You can dump a lot of data in here. If you go to Stat Tools, Correlation Matrix, Entire Table Next, we could dump in BMI, wait time, all the questions from our survey, and hit OK. So now it creates a matrix for you of the correlations between all those variables. So this is a nice way to parse through a lot of data quickly and see if there are any potential x, y relationships. This is subtle. Maybe you will see it better on your screen than in this video. But the Pearson probabilities, the p-values, are in red if they're significant, but they're bold red. 
the corresponding Pearson correlations. If the p-value was red, it will turn the correlation coefficient red to also alert you, but it will not be in bold. In this case, as we look through all of this, you can see that there are a few interesting observations here. Overall satisfaction being related to responsive to questions and also our overall therapist scores. Everything else appears to be weak correlations. Now, this is a great tool to have in our toolbox. Can you imagine a cause and effect diagram where you have a continuous Y and a bunch of continuous X's? You could do the scatter plots and the correlations and they will quickly tell you whether you have any kind of statistically significant potential XY relationship there that you want to study. So it's a, a fast way to narrow down the list of X factors that are actually impacting Y. Great tool to have. I hope you'll use it. Let's go back to the material.